Lesson 12.1D, Graphing Rational Numbers, Identifying, and Graphing Points. An ordered pair may contain rational numbers as positive or negative fractions and decimals. Point A is at 3 fourths for x and 1 and a half for y. So we go 3 fourths right of the or origin because it's a positive 3 fourths. We see this is 1 and we see that this is in increments of 4 units is equal to 1. So to find 3 fourths, we would go to the third unit. Now we go up to 1 and a half, and that would be above the origin. So here's 1, here's 2, 1 and a half is in between. Point A is right there. Point B is at negative 3 fourths. So we're going to go left of the origin, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, and then this is a negative 1 and a half. We're going to go down to in between negative 1 and negative 2. That's negative 1 and a half. It's below the origin. So for a quick review, remember a rational number is a number that can be written in the form, like a fraction, a over b, where a and b are integers and b is not equal to 0. And remember, an integer is a positive or negative whole number. Ordered pairs with rational coordinates can be graphed in the coordinate plane using the same method we used graphing ordered pairs with integer coordinates. So it's no different than if we had 5 and negative 5, except now we have 5 tenths and negative 5 tenths. Our x value is 5 tenths. Here's the origin. And we can see there's 1, so 5 tenths would be right in the middle. And we're going to go down, because this is a negative 5 tenths, we're going to go down on the y from the origin, and that's negative 5 tenths, and that's where the two meet, that's point A. Here it's telling us to graph and label each point on the coordinate plane. And we can see we have some negative decimals, and some positive ones, and we think. We find the x-coordinate first, so for negative 3 tenths, here's x. Well, here's negative 5 tenths. We know that's 0, 0, and we see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So each unit must be 1 tenth. So to get to negative 3 tenths, we must go 1 tenth, 2 tenths. That would be negative 3 tenths right there, and we can see that the y coordinate is 5 tenths, and that's a positive, so we're going to go up. Here's negative 3 tenths, then we're going to go positive 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths. That would be point P. For Q, it's a positive 7 tenths. So here is the origin. We're going to go to the right. Here's 5 tenths. That must be 6 tenths. That must be 7 tenths. And then our y is a positive 2 tenths. So we're right here. We can see if that's 5 tenths, this must be 2 tenths. So we're going to be at a positive 7 tenths, and then we're going to go to a positive 2 tenths. That's point Q. For R, we're at a positive 4 tenths on X, so that would be right here. And we need to go to a negative 6 tenths. So that means we're going to go down. So if that's 5 tenths and each are 1 tenth, we're at a positive 4 for x, and we go down to here for the negative 6 tenths for y, and we can label that point r. So we go x first, we find it, then we follow it to where it meets that y value. Now I know my colors are very helpful, but let's try to graph and label points without color. Just remember that the x is the first value, the y is the second value. So we have point r, and for x, it's at 1 and a half, and that's a positive 1 and a half. So that means we're going to go from the origin, positive is to the right. Here's 1, here's 2, so 1 and a half is right here. And the y value is 2, 
So if we're right here, we need to go up to a positive 2 to right here. That would be point R. For point S, we have a negative 1. And for X, because we know the first value is X, we're going to go to the left. And it's a negative 1, which is right here. And our Y value is a negative 1 fourth. That means we're going to go down on the Y to get into the negatives. So we're at negative 1 on the X. And here's negative 1 on Y. But we need one and negative 1 and 1 fourth. And because these are each broken into 4 between the 1 and the 2, that means 1 fourth is going to be right here. So that means we're going to be at negative 1 and negative 1 and 1 fourth. And that's going to be point S. We went negative on the X, and then we went down to go negative for Y. The location of the point is the intersection of the two lines. Point A is at one-third for the x-coordinate and one-half for the y-coordinate. Because that's a positive one-third, we would go to the right, and because that's a positive half, we would go up. And we can estimate distances between grid lines and scale numbers. It's showing that four units is equal to one, therefore one unit is equal to one-fourth. That would be half, that would be one-fourth. And we can find one-third on x by finding one-fourth and one-half, and one-third would be between them. So one-third would be right here between them. We need to go to one-half for y. It's positive, so that would be right here between the origin and 1. We have point A. We can find half on the y by finding the halfway location between the origin and 1. So there'll be times when we need to graph points, and we won't see that exact number on the scale, but we can estimate where it's at. We know that's 0, and that's half. That's 1 fourth. 1 third would be a little bit more than 1 fourth. It would be between 1 fourth and 1 half. We can just use a little logic and common sense to help us. So the x is the first value, the y is the second value in an ordered pair, and they're in alphabetical order, x, y, z. The x is the horizontal, the y is the vertical. Remember, y goes to the sky, it goes up. And I'm going to have a link to video 7.1b where we graphed ratios back then, and if you missed it, that might help you. We're finished with lesson 12.1. We're going to move on to 12.2, which is split into three parts. The first part is identifying independent and dependent quantities from a table. The most common error that students make when working with x and y coordinates is they don't have them in the correct order. That's why I keep saying over and over again, x is first, y is second. Have a wonderful day, and I hope you'll join me for the next lesson. Bye.